Hi everybody, it's Lisa Murray here. Hi my sweet lifers. We're ready for another episode of Two Chefs in the Sweet Life Kitchen and we're hanging out today. My friend and dear, dear pal over here. We're just <laughs> busy making all kinds of great recipes for you guys. Carlos Wallace has got Seven Seeds Barbecue, as you already know. That oven's already been preheated, as you just heard. And we're going to get yep. started today making some beautiful recipes. So first off, we're going to make my really beautiful cheesy cabbage casserole. Mm. And, you know, we've been pulling all that beautiful vegetables out of the garden, picking up all our herbs that we need today for our recipes for you. So if you'll pull that out of the oven, what okay. I've done, guys, is I've taken one stick of butter and put it in the pan that I'm going to use for the recipe. We've prepped everything for you so it's easy for y'all to see us do this. I know it's difficult not having a bunch of different cameras. But what we're going to do is we're going to put this together. And then this you just bakes just right there on that chopping block is perfect. So okay. what you do is put one stick of butter in there and let it go ahead and melt. And what I want you to do, add to that, is I want you to take some cornflakes, just regular cereal, and put that down in the pan. And this is two cups of corn uh, cornflakes. I'm going to put mm. probably about a full cup down in the pan first to soak up all of that butter. And that's going to make your crust. Nice. So it's going to have a little extra love. I feel like uh, something off a of chopped or something. We're in the chopped kitchen. Chopped kitchen, okay. Some corn flakes. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a layer of this shredded fresh cabbage from the garden. And you just have to be careful because the pan is really hot. And then the next thing I'm gonna do Carlos, I want you to take get all that out of there for you. this is well, here's what I need you to do. We're gonna microwave this. So what we do with this is this is one can of cream of celery soup and one can mm. of cream of chicken soup. And if you don't want to do it with chicken because you're vegetarian or whatever, then you can just do the two cans of the cream of celery. Okay. Or you could do one can of cream of celery and another can of cream of mushroom. Either way is fine. It won't really change the way that this tastes or, or, or is. But to this two cups of of soup, I want you to add a cup of milk. And I want you to add what I've done, just being conscientious cost-wise, my mayonnaise. You're supposed to do a fourth cup of mayonnaise, but you know how I always do a dollop of this and a mm -hmm. scoop of that? <laughs> <laughs> so what did I do with my mayonnaise? I threw a little water in it and shook it up and just squirted the is rest of it is? in there. So this is mayonnaise, but it's yeah. mayonnaise that has from the very bottom of the jar, right? So it's whatever it was left like in there. And, oh, it sure did, but it's just mayo. So... You put so here you go and we'll have all the information for the recipes in the episode below but just to review you're going to take the soup and the milk and the mayonnaise and what i want you to do for me is stick it in the microwave for three minutes and stop it at each minute and just do it a little stir because okay. i need this to be kind of more liquidy and more combined before we pour it over that okay, cabbage you want me to do that that's my job yeah, right if you'll there. do that that right, i'll give you that spoon all right while he's working on that I'm going to get some of these herbs out of the way. While he's working on that, I'm going to start putting together the artichoke pie. Now, the artichoke pie is so easy to do. It's a beautiful dish that looks really fancy, and it looks very expensive, and it's really pretty. And today, what I did is I bought the little itty-bitty cups because, you know, Carlos has seven barbecue. Well, he has seven seeds barbecue because we have seven children. Yes, and I, I want each one of my babies to have their own little individual artichoke pie, except for the newest one, which congratulations to right. him. Thank we you. have a brand new baby this week. I do. Uh, so exciting. Literally three days. I know. So. I'll be photographing him next Tuesday. <laughs> I'm so excited. So what you do with artichoke pie is you take two cans of artichoke hearts and chop them up. And then into this mixture, what I want you to do is take one egg and you just break that in there like that. And then you take an entire container of ricotta cheese. Looks good already. And then you take about a cup of sour cream and dump that in there. And so I'm going to get a spoon. And put all of this together. Stir it up. Get everybody happy together. And then I'm going to add in there a cup of uh, finely grated Parmesan cheese. And the next thing I'm going to add is a little bit of spinach from the garden. Now, you don't have to do spinach if you don't want to. Um, 
you know, it's up to you. But, you know, we always order that spinach and artichoke dip. Mm -hmm. You know, you could even put bacon in this, guys. I, I actually love that. I have some at the house right now. Yeah, I keep it. I keep yeah. it because I always find it as a wonderful little nibble here and there. If there's so a ricotta cheese. This is ricotta. Sour cream. One egg. One egg. Two, artichoke. Two cans of artichoke hearts chopped. Okay. Okay. And then, if you, like I said, if you want to, again, for those of my friends, lots of them in North Carolina have asked for vegetarian dishes, skip the bacon. If you love spinach, if you've got fresh spinach, we just pulled fresh spinach from the Sweet Life Garden, so we've got fresh spinach. Take a handful of spinach. It's not going to hurt anything. Put that in there mm. with it. And then, don't mm, forget, okay. very important step here is the Parmesan cheese, and a full cup of that needs to go in. Look at all those little jibbles in there. All the jibbles. All the jibbles. Now, you know, funny story, and I thought about it whenever you said something about vegetarians and, you know, if, they, and if you're not a vegetarian, add bacon. When I was younger, you know, of course I grew up, you know, mom would make a pot of beans and she'd throw, she'd throw you know, a chunk of a wild boar in there, you know. We'd have hog, hog oh, meat and the, and, the, and the beans, pot of beans, that was normal. Amazing. And I ended up having a friend who was Muslim who came over to the house. And, and, uh, uh, and my mom felt uh, horrible. She was uh, like, oh, no. She, well, of course, he didn't eat it. You know, right. he asked, and we didn't feed it to him. But, you know, I had an <laughs> one of my other friends said, you know, Ali, one taste of these beans, you'll be a born-again Baptist, you know. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So, we, you know, the, the joke has been, you know, the Baptist beans is what my mom and them call it now. They call the, them the Baptist the beans. Baptist beans. That's put the Baptist beans. That's funny. Put a chunk of hog in there. That's the Baptist funny. Beans. That's funny. Well, now, Carlos, hand me this tray so we can show everybody okay. what we're going to do next. Because these are going to go now. in. I'm going to put the artichoke pies in at the same time that we're going to be doing this cabbage casserole. And then we're going to work on um, the macaroni and cheese, Nana's recipe, right quick and get all that in the oven. Mm. Because then we've got to focus all of our attention and efforts on the oxtails and on the, the, short, uh, the, the, the short trip, but also there's potatoes as well. So we've got a bunch of different things going on, so don't get confused. But that's pretty that's, much that's where it needs to be. Right yep, there. that's perfect. If you want to pour that over that, that would be wonderful. Okay. Now, if you wanted to put this on the stove, you could do that too. You could just go ahead and pretend like you're making the soup, except add that mayonnaise and the milk. I always add milk anyway to the soup. Mm. Um, it sometimes says to add water, and sometimes people will add broth, but I actually mm -hmm. prefer milk in it, especially if it's a cream-based soup. I just feel like it makes it richer. I love it that way with um, clam chowder, too. Yeah. And, um, and I even put cream in it. Nice. We always have cream here because I always drink coffee with cream. I don't like it sweet. I just like it with like cream. Like cream. Mm -hmm. And it's cream's much better than half and half. Are we done with this? We here? are done. I'm okay. not sure if my cardiologist would like that, but right? it just is facts and facts, <laughs> right? Okay, so the next thing I want you to do after you've taken that uh, soup and put it down on the cabbage and uh, obviously the cereal, I want you to take a little bit more cabbage and sprinkle that down on top of that, kind of making like a lasagna of cabbage. And then what we're going to do. Carlos, we're going to take the rest of these um, cornflakes and put okay. that on top. I'll give that to you. All right. And then we're going to sprinkle it with a sharp cheddar cheese. It's very important to sharp. use sharp cheddar cheese Got for this recipe. Flavor. Yeah, you need to have that and make that wonderful crust on top. So you've got those buttered up cereal flakes on the bottom, and then you've got the butter, the uh, crispy, cheesy flakes on the top and it's just really wonderful and I remember making this recipe and having this you know Wednesday nights we go to choir practice I was raised in the Baptist Church and y'all know I'm Episcopalian now but I was raised in the Baptist Church and on Wednesday nights we always had choir practice and we'd have supper there and so many times we would make this type of a dish to take to church and we'd have it down in the basement at the Baptist Church and um it's just a, a simple recipe. The kids love it, um, and it's just really, really nice. So the next thing this needs to have happen is 45 minutes in the oven, 350. We'll just keep an eye on it as we're working on all the other stuff that we're doing. If this is still warm, if you'll go ahead and stick that in there, and if you want to set the timer, we can do the timer. Um, 
And I'm going to grab another spoon. We got a little right. cornflake over here in our artichoke pie crust, and I'm going to fix up these pies real quick and show you how to do that. So easy. Um, just love this. This is actually also a wonderful little dish to make for uh, a tomato basil soup side. So if you had like a fresh salad with some vinaigrette, like we did the other uh, other week, the beets and the goat cheese, and then to have a little one of these little artichoke pies and some tomato basil soup, really really delicious. Or some gazpacho with the artichoke pie in the summer. And once the tomatoes, we're going to be putting tomato seedlings in. Um, and you guys need to watch that. We've got a Facebook group for each of the shows, and the Facebook group that's the gardening group. I'm going to be doing a tutorial showing you how to do your seedlings. And all my heirloom seeds and tomatoes and, and cucumbers are going to be going in within the next few weeks. So nice. seaweed baths with micro life, just a lot of really cool stuff. So if you're into gardening and you want to do a garden to table like we're doing, yeah. you definitely want to tune in and make sure you don't miss that. But I'm going to get a little bit smaller spoon. I'm going to go around the corner and get that because I just forgot to get it because I want to scoop this in here, this mixture that we've just made with the artichoke. All right. And while you're doing that, I'm going to kind of just begin to talk about this before you know we're not going to start on that just yet but um the way this started out and i left this in the package purposely because we get in my house and my family we get a cow slaughtered every year it honestly it, it's better meat you know we uh we we buy the cow we feed the cow and, and we slaughter it um we're fortunate enough to have family that does that for us and then you know you know what's been what has been fed you know where it's coming from it has it doesn't have any uh anything injected or anything in into the meat right it's it's fresh yep no but antibiotic we, or anything and we ran into the man i want some oxtails but i have a large family well that's all the oxtails we have we don't have that much and so what we ended up doing was well let's let's do something mix where we can we mix it with both the the short ribs mm -hmm. and the and the oxtail so that's kind of where that that started and it's real simple, very easy, but has very deep flavor. Mm -hmm. So when we get it to that, it reminds me almost of a beef burgundy. Like every time that I've I've had yes. oxtails, it's reminded me of that. And honestly, we didn't grow up making them, but I've had them in like restaurants. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. It's really nice to be able to show you guys how to make that. And and I tell you one thing, I'm going to be interested in getting with you guys and feeding me a little baby cow. And getting me some meat you should. too. Yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll discuss that here yeah. coming up probably here in the next three months or so, three or four months. So definitely, we'll, yeah. we'll do that. Well, this is easy as it can be. All you do is you just take this mixture and stick it down here in all of these little pies. And if you have any of this stuff left over, you can stick it in your refrigerator, and you can make something else with it. You can put asparagus in a pan, and you can layer it. Remember, all you've got here is artichokes and spinach and cheese right so it's good stuff. it's good stuff <laughs> so you could do a quiche with it you know you mm -hmm. can roast some vegetables and sprinkle this on top of it and make this be a part of what you're using you know we did leftovers last week guys and there's a lot of ways that you can use all these ingredients in multiple ways to make different dishes that everybody loves and nobody realizes that you've been using right. leftovers yeah. right so absolutely I always recommend that if you can do it the good thing about leftovers is they always have a lot of flavor already in them. You know, you make the spaghetti, and everybody always says, man, spaghetti tastes so much better the next day, you know. This right here, I can tell you, I don't know. It, it, my wife might eat that before we even be at, it even makes it into the little pie well, bowl. Well, that's the reason why I wanted to be sure that I um, made this, because she's nursing, and, you know, we just had that baby. And I was thinking about, you know, I even asked uh, Carlos when we got here earlier today before, you know, prepping for the show, if we needed to not put the jalapeno in the macaroni and cheese. Because, Lord have mercy, I have to tell you the story. You know, James Edward ate boobies for two years. And Victoria Ann had her first anaphylactic reaction when she was seven months. And that was really strange because back then, 22 years ago, children weren't having that severe food allergies it right. was the beginning of that, right? Yeah. They didn't even have all the labels or anything. And so we've lived all these years parenting a child with EpiPen and making sure that you didn't have nuts and all oh. those things. And she's still highly allergic to a lot of the stuff that she was allergic to even as a baby. Wow. And But one time I was nursing James and, and they asked me, 
when I got pregnant that second round if I would be willing to do that. And I was like, sure. I mean, I own the company. I photograph pregnant, naked women and babies all day long. Mm -hmm. I can whoop out a booby and feed a baby, and nobody's going to say anything <laughs> to me, right, because I own the company. There you go. So I just did my <laughs> own thing, and he was guaranteed titties for two years. But here's the thing. One day, out of all these times that I fed this baby, he turned his head away and would not nurse, screaming his tail off. You ate some spicy. I ate red pepper flakes. My mother-in-law had come to visit from North Carolina. She had made her peppered uh, beef tips over rice, mm. y'all. Brian loves it. And I ate it, didn't think a thing about it, and that baby was mad. So I, I wanted that. to make sure before we started doing our recipes today that I didn't mess up and make titties hot titties. <laughs> what is what we call it? Oh, hot Lord. titties. Making Goodness. sure I didn't mess up my little baby because uh. I want him to be so happy and not give her any trouble because I know y'all are up <laughs> all night long right now with that newborn. They keep you up, but gosh they knows do. I just love them. I have loved photographing all of these babies all these years. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's he's super precious. I I had to hold him, give him a give him a kiss real quick before I came over here today. I, I've been so busy today. I felt bad. I was like, man, Daddy hadn't had a, time, a lot of time to spend play with you today. Yeah, I know it. Well, well he ain't worried about that. He's worried about mama. Feeding. He's worried about I mean, mama's boobies. All, is all he's worried it. about. I tell you that right now. That's that's the world I live in. It's <laughs> booby booby booby. Now I've got these filled up, good and full. And that's exactly what I want you to do. Fill them up a little bit. Don't be afraid if they're a little bit high. They're not muffins. Mm -hmm. They're they're like little baby quiches almost. But they're going to settle out, right? They you are. Gonna I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of pepper on top. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm going to do that. You want me to get this for you? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's. We'll sprinkle a little bit of pepper on top of there, and Carlos, if you'll stick that. In I, the want, oven. I, I have to say, I, this is worth mentioning. It's very funny. Now, I was last week. If y'all remember, she had an identical glass bowl for the pepper over here. Yes, I did. In the middle of shooting, as it was going, I broke it. Right, and then I was frozen. I was like, "Oh no, what do I do?" So he what even let out do? a little. Huh. <laughs> and then James Hepper was doing the editing for that. It was so funny because we had two calamities that one y'all didn't even know about. It all happened because it was edited out. Where mm -hmm. I busted a glass all over the floor, but that one you actually an audible. Huh. And <laughs> James he was trying to find that for the editing, and he was like, "I got it." It didn't take him long at all yeah. to find that he saw it. This is what she got. She has to, to basically, she has to Carlos proof the kitchen. She's getting <laughs> cast iron and everything. So I'm just, uh, that was funny. This was the joke <sighs> today. All right, I'm going to give right. these to you. Going in there. Stick them in there. Again, I watch that. Y'all know me. Y'all know how I cook. I'm an artist before I'm anything else. And so it's a dollop of this and a pinch of that and whatever. And yep. so I, you know, I, I've made them big. I made it big for Christmas um, because we just had this our family gathering, and then I made them itty bitty. And my son-in-law just fell in love with the way that they tasted. He said they taste better. There's, I guess, it's just because it's more concentrated, and it's just the right proportion, a different feeling yeah. in the mouth. And so yeah. that's why I wanted to go with that as well because that's how I'll make them from now on. But 350 is the same same temperature and for all long? of it. Well, I'm going to just keep an eye on it. Okay. I'm going to say okay. we know that cabbage casserole is in there for 45, so I'm going to keep an eye on it while we're working on the oxtails and the, and the ribs. Um, I want to put together Nana's right quick because this is soup, so easy, and all of it can just be baking while we're doing the, the other stuff. So what I've gone ahead and done is this. And this is just a snack on. That's yeah, just a snack okay. on. Well, there's a raw egg in there, so you do kind of have to be considerate of that. Yeah. That's never scared me you away from anything. Yeah. So what I've done, this is not sexy, and I apologize for that, but again, because I'm sending him home with food for the family, I've taken the liberty of using this type of a packaging just to get Perfect. the macaroni and cheese done. Now, I asked him, you're going to laugh, because macaroni and cheese is actually on his menu for the, the truck, and, and he started talking about all this stuff, this roux, and making this stuff, and I thought, mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Well, I've never done it that way before, and so he just smiled and said, "I want you to make Nana's." And so I'm just going to do Nana's recipe because this is, this is just how I know how to make the macaroni and cheese. Now, how this has happened in terms of the history of it is, we always have a ham for Christmas, okay. and so Nana would take the ham and she would chop it up, 
and then she turned it into macaroni and cheese. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm the oldest of five. I've got, come from a big family like you've got. Mm -hmm. And so that was her way of taking that ham and making sure it didn't go to waste. The rest of it would go into the butter beans or mm -hmm. the black eyed peas or some other beans that she was mm -hmm. working on. But, but the main part of that leftover ham would just get chopped. And so what I've got is I've got some leftover ham hock. And I had used this for another recipe, if you are watching the Sweet Life Supper series on Instagram during this month in January, you would have seen that recipe there as a dinner that we had one night. But I've just taken the ham hocks and I've chopped them up into little little pieces, bite-sized pieces, some of them a little bit bigger than others. And all I'm going to do, we've got cooked macaroni, there's just cooked macaroni with a little bit of olive oil on it, and I'm going to just take a handful of the ham hock and just evenly put into each one of these pans since one's going to your house and one's staying mm -hmm. here at mine and just get the ham in there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of onion and I'm going to put that in there this is just chopped scallions guys nothing special about that and right. then I'm going to take a little bit of cream there we go. Now this is heavy whipping cream. This is not uh, half and half and this is not watered down milk. This is the real deal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle in here, right? And then the next thing I'm going to do, I might need a little more of that actually. Yeah, if you'll get me a little yep. bit more of the cream, I'm going to take some, and you know what else I'd like a little bit more of, Carlos? Mm -hmm. Is some more cheese as I'm eyeballing more this. Cheese. The I got cheese you. is right Ch there in front of me. Right, that's it right there. Sharp cheddar, just like there I talked go. to you about for That's that right. cabbage. Sharp cheddar has to be the cheese you use. Now, Nana would take it on the block. We were never going to buy any grated cheese pre-done. That would have been against the religion to do that. But thank goodness they have that. That's perfect. Readily available, right, for everybody now. I don't even remember because I never I went to the grocery store up. Growing, up, growing up. But um, sharp cheddar is very important. But she would slice it in big chunks and lay it in there with the ham. Mm. Um, so it just, let me get a little bit more of that cream in there. Let's see, where do I, I think this is the one that needs a little bit more. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna take the cheese, and this is about two cups, I think, just this whole bowl. But I'm gonna take... You know, a lot of cooking is, is eyeballing. You it know, is. You know, you, you make recipes for, for, for other people to cook, right? You know, or for if, if I want one of my kids or if somebody else wants to know how to cook something, well, now i got to make the recipe. i got to figure out, it out. what everything, I did. Everything that you do at the house, you eyeball it, and you know how it is. Like we were talking about the, the, the cornbread dressing or whatever. I had to sit on the phone with my grandmother, and I had to build a recipe out of that. Because right. Because it's just something she just do together. Just I mean, and that's, does it. That's how I do all the time. And... and and I, I've been trying to get better about it um, because on the on the trailer and, and the, with Seven Seeds, I'm going to have to, you know, train other people to do the work as I take on more stuff. That's right. So And more shows with Auntie A. And, uh, you there. So we're going to, you see what I've done here. I've used my hands. God gave us hands for a reason. So this is what I've done. I've used my hands. And sometimes my hands are the best way to get things incorporated. Mm -hmm. I know people try to be fancy and cute and mm -hmm. use spoons and spatulas, but mm -hmm. honestly, sometimes just sticking your hands in there and just doing it is the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you want me to take those jalapenos and put them in there and mix, or do you yes. want me to? You do. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So his children happen to like spicy. Again, I don't know if this new baby is going to, and it's frightening to me to do a whole lot because I really don't want to mess up those boobs. We'll find out. But you know, the whole time, <laughs> the whole time that she was pregnant, she ate spicy. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of probably all my kids eat very spicy food. It's kind of crazy to me because they're not that's, they're not normal kids. They eat habanero yeah. sauce on everything, so it, it's weird. But uh, this one, he'll probably be the same. So all I've done, y'all have watched me while he was telling you about that, more. is you just take a little bit more cheese and stick it on top. No, I think, well, maybe a little bit more over here. No, and so what I would suggest is, again, just watching it. Everything in here is already cooked, right? I mean, you're not going to hurt yourself. The ham's done, and macaroni's already done. And the only thing you've got to really look for is for mm -hmm. everything to just come together. Um, let that cheese get crusty on top. If you want to throw the broiler on at the very tail end of it, just to get a little bit more of a browning on it, you can do that, but be really careful with that because that broiling stuff happens really fast. 
but that's it for yep. my recipes that's it so we've done the three and then if you'll stick this in the oven yep. and then I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'll be at your disposal Carlos to help you any way I can on these oxtails and these right. potatoes so we'll be I'll be right back okay well good deal um, just uh, like I said the way the way that this our recipe started out was the fact that we wanted some oxtails we love oxtails uh, and um, we didn't have enough and oxtails aren't necessarily uh, inexpensive <laughs> they're they can be kind of expensive for, uh, for not a lot of meat right so what we ended up doing was mixing it with the uh, beef short ribs and worked out awesome so I left that in the package because I wanted to show again, like I was speaking earlier, we get ours, we get a, a cow process. Of course, we're I'm a hunt, we're I'm from a hunting family. We hunt, and we fish, we do everything, but we get it processed and just just the, I mean, you can see the color is even it's deep, you know. And so, something to think about if you have the freezer space, it you save money in the long run and it's better quality meat. Hell, right? something to think about just to get a freezer and make sure you've got antibiotic free what you know what you're eating yep now that's part of the deal guys i mean i when i was going through the i don't know if you remember me doing all those shows with the chefs but i was doing shows with the chefs and i was doing my column called the artist's palette several years back and i was going all over restaurants in houston interviewing chefs and, and tasting their foods and i got sick Mm. I got sick because they're using things at the restaurant that had grain in it. Um, a lot of uh -oh. times they were using stuff that was just uh, some spice that I was allergic to or was sensitive to. And I had a lot of allergy testing done. The allergies for my daughter came through our family, my side of the family, um, and realized that I was allergic to all kinds of stuff that I just loved to eat and had to stop eating for about a year and then gradually bring it back into my diet and was able to actually have it. things that were crazy carlos like strawberries and spinach wow. uh, that normally you would be told to eat all the time yeah and i was eating so much of the good stuff but i was developing a, a i guess a resistance in my body to it and it was causing a lot of uh, gut problems so you know and even why it's even more important for you to uh have, have your own garden if you can yeah you know if you're fortunate enough to do that yeah right? and that's one of the reasons why i started doing the garden way back when and i went through i don't know um i'll have to show it to you guys at some point i don't know how i'll do that but with the shows and stuff maybe i'll do it on instagram feed or whatever but i was going through some images yesterday actually and moving images over to my constant contact because I invited a bunch of you guys um, that are not watching the show. Hopefully you'll tell your friends to watch the show because if you're finding any value in this, we need yeah. you to like and share and subscribe because we, we can't really monetize this thing until we get it to a thousand subs and I think it's 4,000 views or something and we're getting there. We've only been on on uh, YouTube for a little bit under a year. Yeah. Uh, but, but anyway, long story short, I was going through images in my phone, Carlos, and I was taking pictures of me in the garden and taking pictures of my food on my plate like I've been doing now conscientiously through my pivot and you mm -hmm. know through the pandemic and the pivot um, into your passion and and this has been a long time coming I mean this I you know I thought I was so brilliant to have all this extra time to be able to create the YouTube channel and this was something new and I was back looking at 2015 and some of the posts that I had done on my Instagram and on my Facebook and just taking pictures in my phone and I was shooting me in the garden with tomatoes way back when so this has been like 10 well five years really uh, in the making subconsciously right and now it's just finally come to, to a fruition so I'm saying all yes. that for two things one to mention yes you do need to get a garden put together if you can mm -hmm. even if it's just something small just herbs or something because it does make such a difference in your cooking and it also your health. Yeah. But the other thing is for those of you who are thinking about what you would love to do and you do for free, look through your phone, look at your magazines on your coffee table and see if any of that gives you any insight to what's already subconsciously there in your mind. Because it's crazy to think that I was actually doing that for five years before I actually put all that together subconsciously to actually have the, have the uh, wherewithal to not be scared and to just create a show and work on a channel and share with you guys what I know. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, all right, you're over okay. there just to doctrine it up. Well, tell I'm going to tell you, yeah. Okay, so what, I, what I've done is when you get the short ribs and the oxtails, 
you want to kind of go ahead and pre-season them and you can you know be liberal with it get your season salt and pepper you know just salt and pepper get it on there have your skillet whatever skillet you have uh, don't crowd it too much you know put oil in there I'm using olive oil yep. right here um, so you can use whatever oil get you some oil in there and then you're gonna brown the each side of, of your meat okay. right once that's done browning like I have some left out, we'll remove this, put it in the, the pan, mm -hmm. put the rest in there, we'll brown that, then we'll remove that and we'll start on our vegetables. Perfect. Very, very simple, it, you know, like I said, we'll get this heat going here. Kind of like what I do, and I haven't showed you guys how to do that yet, but I do that with any uh -huh. piece of meat that's going into my crock pot for the day. It doesn't matter if it's chicken or beef or pork, I always sear it and make sure it's got a crust around it so that it doesn't come out tasting like soggy meat. Because that's what Brian calls it. When, he, when you put meat in there wet and you don't put a nice crust on it before it goes mm -hmm. down into the, to the pan to cook longer or pressure cook or whatever you're gonna do with it, um, it makes a huge difference by just taking the extra step. Go ahead and get that thing um, locked in with all of your spices and just a nice, a nice skin on it, a nice little skin on it. Plus, you know, I know you're going to do that for them today as well. The vegetables are going to go down into the pan with the wine and all of that. You know, the crust that's being formed with the meat, if you throw it in there with a little bit of extra oil or even some broth or wine or, or all the above, yes. it really helps to loosen up all of the yumminess that's in that pan. And William's coming today to visit us as well. <laughs> we all know William. I had another follower that was watching our show. Uh -huh. She just sent me a message and she said, oh, William's talking in the background of your, of your video. Yeah. It's so wonderful. Everybody just loves William. William has his own special thing that he does on Wednesdays. Um, I don't know if you saw that today on because today's Wednesday. We're taping Wednesday to air tomorrow. Um, I haven't watched I've, it, but I, I did see it. Well, I've started, first off, I've started taking a lot more pictures of him because he got diagnosed with thyroid, uh, hypothyroidism, and, and I've had cats a long time. And once we start getting up in years and start developing diseases, uh, we're taking medicine every day now. And, and so we all know the inevitable, right? We all know. And so mm -hmm. I have not found myself with enough images of Christopher Thomas or George Francis or Charlie or Nathaniel Lee, all of our animals that we've had since we've been married for, for over 30 years. And so I just decided I was going to start taking pictures of William and he has started posing. And normally cats don't do that, huh. but he knows now. He used to turn his head to the side and be a cat and act, you know, whatever. And now he actually looks straight in the, in the camera and looks at me and does a beautiful photo. But there's an app, and we're not getting any sponsorship for this. Just telling you this, just me telling you something wonderful that I found. Prisma is an app that I found. It just stumbled upon my phone, and it turns the photos into paintings. And so I started creating this gorgeous, oh, like, charcoal yeah. yummy paintings of William. And then I thought, you know what, when we did our survey to see what you guys were interested in having us talk about, people kept coming back with things like cooking and gardening and positive thinking was one of the big ones. And so with me, uh, it's funny, you know, you get this degree in psychology and all these years go by and you're a photographer and everything else, but you're not really using it. Although I would argue I've used my psychology degree quite a bit, parenting and helping mothers and families through the years. But Positivity is really important right now. It's important all the time, but it's really important right now. And teaching people how to live their sweet lives and understand that they can create a beautiful, sustainable garden from their, their homes and then bring beautiful food into their tables and feed their families healthier yep. um, is all part of that positivity. And so I've been looking for really cool quotes on you know what that would be as a message for William to give to everybody each week. And so William's wit on Wednesdays. Mm, okay is part of my little posting thing and he has uh he's been a good little model for that <laughs> he sure has all right tell me what i can do next uh right now we're uh i'm probably gonna get this fire going on this i can start that okay and we're Be gonna careful. get the potatoes now what i've done with the potatoes before we started is i went ahead and and asked mia to cut everything up these are Yukons. We just cut them up into small pieces and boil them and then drain them. And so they're just pre-cooked, essentially, potatoes. And, yes. And, and I was telling her that, honestly, what I found when you do that, one, it's, you know, it cooks faster once you, you pan fry it, right? 
to um, it to me I've done it both ways where you don't cook it and then prior to putting it in the pan and frying it and then where where you do and it seems to soak up the flavor better mm -hmm. that way mm -hmm. now you can put them in the oven you know olive oil salt once you've cubed it up you know 30 minutes maybe 20 to 30 minutes and then they're done they're good to go and then after that you just throw it in the pan and then what I'm going to do today is we're going to do the rosemary and garlic uh, pan fried potatoes a lot of flavor very easy and it'll make you want to keep cooking them so as you see right now we're just we're still we're just browning these we've salted and peppered like I said liberally it's got the flavor on it we're gonna brown each side once those are brown we'll move those into the pan mm -hmm. and we'll put the rest of it in there brown that we'll get started on the vegetables and it's a very simple deal you, you know if, if 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 the oil and the contents in the pan or in the in the pot are burnt after we brown these then I typically discard it if it's not burnt you know, it could be dark, right. but if it's not burnt, there's a lot of flavor in that. You don't want to get rid of that. You no, want to keep that. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's real good stuff. You want to keep that. But we'll, we'll determine. Either way, it doesn't matter because it's still, there's so much flavor in this. It's very rich. You know, you're cooking with, with the red wine, which brings me to. Right. You, uh, this is just a, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's, it's cheap. It's like six six dollar bottle. Yep. It's all you need. You don't have to break the bank nope. to get a to cook with the red wine right and that one right there it doesn't even have a cork twist top but it's it's all you need and the flavor is extraordinary if you want something rich that you typically don't get unless you have it at a, a restaurant you gotta red add the wine, wine. You red add wine, wine is great and you know i was cooking my marsala i think it was last weekend and um and i called the down from upstairs and i said listen i need some chardonnay and he showed up with the Moscato, and I was like, you can't have Moscato, that's too sweet. <laughs> so we finally found some in the, in the wine cellar, and I'm low on all of that. I've got apparently tons of Moscato. One of my mamas and daddies brought me a couple of cases of stuff. Somebody else brought me a case of champagne, because I was doing a party for charity one year. And y'all know I drink vodka, so I was not really into worrying about wine. But I'm now that we're doing a lot more cooking, and especially you and I are cooking mm -hmm. together, a lot of recipes that really do have that upper level quality, that high quality that comes from that restaurant feel is all because of using wine, special vinegars, spices that you don't normally have um, on a regular in your kitchen. And so part of what we want to do with the show is show you how to do that and to do it very, very economically as well. So yeah. $6 bottles of wine. I need to buy a case of white and a case of red and keep that so that we have what we need for recipes coming up. So so you're yeah. just putting everything so, down in the pan. Yeah. Putting it in the pan. Um, and then I'm gonna, before I add anything else, um, I'm going to, sometimes I like to add onion to that also. I like to dice some onion and add it. But before I add anything else, I'm kind of going to brown it up just a little bit, start getting it crisp, and then you add, it's going to cook fast, and you add your garlic, your garlic will burn in there, you know, you add your garlic, you add your uh, rosemary, I, I've also done them with thyme, uh, thyme is very good, actually, yeah, we'll cut it. I will say this, rosemary is good, but rosemary is very, very um, strong. It is. And if your family does not like that, then thyme is an absolutely fantastic suggestion. Yeah. Um, I've got both in the garden, and, and I use probably more thyme than I do rosemary, just because Brian's not a big fan of rosemary. Interestingly enough, Brian's not a big fan of saffron either. And I was making a, a Persian rice the other mm -hmm. day that called for saffron. a saffron, yeah. and, and I substituted it with cilantro, and, um, and he liked it. So that's good. You know, just think about how you can change it up. I'm going to take a second and give William a treat and clean up a little bit of these dishes that are sitting out here on our counter, and I'll be right back with you. Do you need right. me for a minute, or are you good? I don't. I'm good. I'm okay. just going to kind of put this together, talk to everybody as I do. So, like I said, we'll kind of separate little stems out of it, you know. And once I do that, you can, 
the, the size of it's really up to you um, when you want it. If, like I said, if you don't like rosemary, um, then thyme is very, very good as well. And you could probably, honestly, uh, kind of experiment with other herbs and see what stuff that you like. But, all right, so we got the, we got everything in the pans. You hear them over there sizzling, they're browning. I put this rosemary in here. Uh, our meat's looking, getting close. It's almost ready to go. Grab this minced garlic. I love minced garlic. I love that they've uh, oh, done, the, done the work too. for us already. All right, we use this abundantly at the house. There is no, I don't have any measurement on this, guys. I I did three of these right here, and I might even add more here in just a few. Um, we got that going. Get a little. Give a. Is this? Slotted spoons. In, in, or spatula, something. Either one. Spatula would be good. Speaking of garlic, guys, one of the things that I'm going to show you to do is how to put garlic in the dirt and set it up so that you've got your own garlic growing out there as well. Mm. And uh, you get yourself a bag of cloves. I'll go ahead and tell you about it, but I'm going to show you actually a tutorial on it at a later episode. This spring I'm putting in all that stuff, right? And so we're really making sure that you guys get the step-by-step -step tutorials on all the different things. Because I had cucumbers, just mountains and mountains and mountains of cucumbers and beautiful purple and uh, green striped tomatoes and heirloom tomatoes and all kinds of just lovely things and so um, in prepping for that I do want to do garlic. I didn't do garlic last year, I did chives. So is garlic and like potatoes? Like you said, you well they are, you there? do. You take the clove and slice off the bottom and then you stick it in the dirt like you would the eye of the potato down in the dirt. Okay. And, I, and I had potatoes guys, I did a whole potato bed and then the raccoons came and dug them all up. I don't know if y'all remember that video where I planted all those tomatoes, gorgeous, beautiful San Marzano and aroma and beefsteak tomatoes and you put an egg in the dirt when you do that. Each plant needs an egg and I was before, you learn every time you do anything, it's before I had every bed covered or I had the beds covered and then I had it where you could take the tops off because they were hinged in and locked down and the reason why they're no longer locked down on a lot of the new beds is because I discovered that I need to have them topped when the eggs are still fresh underneath. The raccoons can smell them and they'll come and dig up your tomato plants and toss them all over which way and you won't know after you've labeled everybody out there in the dirt who is what until they grow and you realize what you've got. And sometimes you've got a variety that doesn't need to be beside another variety because it needs more space and so it was a mess. It was a beautiful mess but it was a mess nonetheless and so this year I've now got the top so I can actually put the top down on those tomato babies with the eggs and then um, take them off and let them grow over the archways too. So you live and you learn and gardening is like everything else. You just got to kind of go with the flow and make some changes and make some notes as you go. Those are gorgeous. So that's, we got browned, they're crisp, they're ready to come out of there. Because these things are going to braise for a couple of hours guys. You know, and those are of course the oxtails, and these are the beef short ribs. And That's you can beautiful. See, you can see the season on there, right? Yeah. We got just a little more to do, and then we'll be ready to start on the uh, vegetables here. Look at that, and guys! I'm add beautiful. A little bit more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so that we don't call the Fresno Fire Department. There we go. We're gonna, well, what I'm gonna do, see, you know, in this one, I'm gonna, once I brown these, I'm gonna clean that out, you know. I got it a little too high, but it's still good enough that I can brown these on it. I'm gonna actually. We got six minutes and 43 seconds left on the cabbage. When you got heat on this, you want me to stir this or leave yes, it? Yes, ma'am. We can just kind of mix that. I did it on a low heat, so mix that up just a little bit, and, and it'll be done here pretty quick. Get these browned up. Let me throw this and wash my hands. Uh, 
I always try to leave one hand clean. That way I don't spread stuff all over the place. All right, now so she's mixing up the potatoes. The potatoes already got the garlic. Like I said, I, I, honestly, I, I, I forgot. Um, I do like to add onion to that. So dice of onion, half of onion, depending on the amount of potatoes you have. In this case, a half onion would probably have been plenty. Dice it, put that in there with it, and it adds a lot of deep flavor. It's going to be very flavorful already. It's got garlic. Um, you can even do butter. I used olive oil this time. Olive oil goes really good with potatoes. When you, when you season it, it's almost like having butter in it. So uh, we got the rosemary and the garlic. That's, those are going to be awesome. You know, those will be good. This right here is hot enough. It's browning these things pretty quick. Yep. And I'm gonna flip them. Mm-hmm. Instead of I, stirring them, I'm gonna flip them. I even with with these kinds of potatoes, if you see some sticking to the skillet, you I scrape that up. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. It's like caramelized pieces of potato. Yeah. That you, it'll start mixing in with everything. Everybody knows if you've had, you know, homemade French fries or you know, pan fried breakfast potatoes or anything else. Say so check that out, guys. You know that that stuff is sticking down there. That's the good stuff. As long as you don't leave it there and let it burn. If you get it up good, boom. You mix, that mixes in. That's just like little bitty pieces of flavor all throughout the potatoes. I actually you know? would prefer it that way. Yep. You just got to babysit it a little bit more mm -hmm. to get that to happen. Okay. So those brown pretty quick. We'll get those out. These in here. I'm going to wash our pan, our pot, just a little bit, and then we'll get started on the uh, vegetables. Okay. Right here's some pot holders. There's some. Right. You got them? Yeah. Okay. Put this fire off. Mm. All right, I'm going to check on, we got just a little bit of time left. I'm going to check on our cabbage casserole because it is done. I can see that from from here. So there's the cabbage casserole. Look how beautiful that is. Everything's all bubbling in there. Just beautiful. Yeah, that looks good. So we're going to set that there. And I'm going to turn those artichoke pies sideways so they can get a little bit better circulation. And I'm going to actually take this up to 400 degrees. So I want to get a little bit more of a of a crust on those artichoke pies. Actually, I think I'm going to take it up to 450. You know, y'all know. I don't have to keep telling you over and over again, but y'all know how I cook is by seeing things and mm -hmm. little of this and a little <laughs> bit of that. I am going to take once we get these oxtails and ribs into the um, Dutch oven and chop up some of this. Look at this gorgeous parsley, guys. This is parsley that I planted back right before COVID, and they're just still going strong. But a little note to tell you about: those beautiful monarch butterflies that are pur they're purpley blue. They eat the curly one. They eat the curly parsley. And so, whenever you plant your parsley this spring, be aware of that because you will see. And I'll put a picture out there for you to see the little caterpillars. I thought they were the cutest little things. So darling, little cute caterpillars. They were so pretty and beautiful and black and yellow. And, and I went out there in like a day and all my parsley was completely gone. It was just sticks sticking up. So I had to go hunt to find more parsley. And then what I had to do was net it. And then I took another one and I put it out there in the middle of the Sweet Life Garden and let the babies that were still trying to find their parsley, that's their favorite food apparently, uh, sacrifice to plant for them to continue to eat. Because, you know, it's like me pulling stuff out of the garden to feed the deer. But I got the tops down to keep the deer off of it. I yep. want to feed everybody, but at the same time, I got to eat too. So, <laughs> a 
we learn how to share. Yep, all right. What we'll do here. Let's see, while you're working on that, let me, I'm gonna flip these potatoes again. So I'm just putting, what I, I didn't tell you what I got. What I have is just carrots. Um, I peeled them and chopped them about quarter inch. And then the same thing with, a, I didn't peel, but I have a celery also. So carrots and celery, and both of them about a quarter inch chop on them. Uh, about four, four carrots and uh, three stalks of celery, whatever, whatever you like uh, in there. Uh, we'll get those going. They are in the oil. We got the oil on. We'll get that going. And then we'll add a little season. After that, for for one pot, you're going to need about... A whole about, bottle? No, half. About <laughs> half this bottle. What'd you say? I thought you said a whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> about half of this bottle okay. be good. The <laughs> other thing that you're going to add to it uh, is tomato paste. Yep. Put some tomato paste in there. And then we'll add some water. Yep. We'll let that simmer, reduce a little bit. Add that to our pan. It goes in the oven for about two hours. Yep. And we're good to go. Yep. Yeah. You know. Now I did cook some, and I, I prepared one prior to coming over here right. because we're, we're cooking all this. We're hungry. We ain't, we don't want to wait now because it's so late, two to three hours to eat. Yeah. So I have this pot that y'all been seeing back here is the finished product mm -hmm. of what I did on that. It showed oven. you how to do it, like the big old fancy cooking shows where they've got everything pre-done and then they whoop it out of the oven and go, mm -hmm. well, here's the one you made and here's the one that's finished. So you pulled a fast one, my, yep. my professional chef over here. There we go. He's really <laughs> knocking it out of the park. Speaking of that, are those still warm or do we need to start warming that up? Because we'll be ready to eat here shortly. Those are... They're be warm. careful. Okay. Well, as long as they're warm, they're warm. We should be good. Yeah. I mean, there's no way really to. I don't know if we. Look got how beautiful that, that is, guys. That's just gorgeous. You know Swimming I mean? in yumminess. Swimming. And you know what you'll have to do. There's going to be a couple things. Uh, we're going to add water to it. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the process, cooking process in the oven, 350. It's a good temperature for those as well. Halfway through that, I'd go in there and I would flip the uh, meat, the meat over, right? Because you know, a lot, some of it's going to be sticking out of the the fluid, and so flip it over, and then also check back within 15, 20 minutes. Make sure that it hadn't reduced down so much that it starts burning. Seeing it reduced isn't a big deal because you can always add water add, to that. Yeah. You can add water to that and there's deep, deep flavor, right? I do like also uh, to add a cup of chicken stock Okay. to that. Okay. So a cup of chicken stock. You want me to get that? But ha you have some? I do. That'd be I'll awesome. Be right we can do that. that. That'd be great. Sure. I dropped the ball today. Forgot, forgot that as well. But um, so... This bottle here, I'll tell you the size. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people looking already know. It's 750 milliliters. Half of this bottle. Like I said, a little can of tomato paste. Eyeball the water, you know, probably about three cups, but you may have to add because it's gonna reduce as it's, it, when you put it in the oven, it's, you're gonna cover it, but it's still going to reduce. Um, and just, just watch it. It doesn't have to cover the meat because, like I said, you're going to go in and flip it. And then also, the chicken stock and the wine and everything is going to be in here. We're going to reduce that first prior to spooning it over the meat before we add it to the oven. See, and this is already, you know, already cooking pretty good here. So what I can do now, I can go ahead and add the wine. Like I said, doesn't have to be expensive. Um, Cabernet Sauvignon is a good wine to braise this with. And you can eyeball it. If you're a wine drinker, you can drink the rest of the bottle, right? So, and wine is very, very rich when you cook with it, all right? 
That's why I said even if it reduces, it's going to have a lot of flavor. You can add water. Don't think that you've over, you know, powered it with flavor. Add water and then, you know, warm it until, you, until it tastes like you want it to. These potatoes are done. We'll cut the heat on these potatoes. They are good to go. They're ready, ready to eat. Okay, that's the timer. So let's check this timer and see what she got going here. Her her spinach artichoke pies, they, they look good. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't pull them yet. Uh, we'll leave that up to her. And that macaroni is looking awesome. You know, if you like cheese and things like that, can't go wrong there. All right, so like I said, I'm going to add a can of this tomato paste in here. And that can of tomato paste is going to go a long way with that red wine. A couple of things that you can cook with, uh, with the braised meat, whether it's short ribs or oxtails or anything else, you know. You know, uh, right now we have, I have pan fried potatoes because I was in a mood for those. But um, do mashed potatoes, you can do polenta. You can, uh, rice, like I was saying before, rice goes good with pretty much everything. Well, and you know what else we could do is, this is going to sound really upper level, but risotto. Risotto, yeah. Ooh with that gorgeousness. Risotto yeah. with that? Are you kidding me? That's just beautiful. So yeah. pretty. And one thing you want to look out for too is some of the sometimes you'll get oxtails that are more fatty and short ribs that are more fatty. We're already using an oil to fry them in, and we're not discarding the oil. So whenever it comes out the oven, if there's a layer of fat on there that you don't like, what a lot of people will do is they'll they may remove the oxtails from the pan skim off some of that fat, mm -hmm. then either add them back to the pan or just pour the, the, the juice over it, whatever. So, but some of them are more lean. Like the, the these short ribs that I had from our cow, was mm -hmm. a lot more lean, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have as much fat. Fat on it. Right. I'm gonna pull the macaroni and cheese out, guys, and I'll be right back. So that's the first one, guys. Look how gorgeous that is. I can smell the jalapeno in there, too. Carl, you got the other one. You can move these oxtails over. Beautiful. It's starting to look like a lot of cheese, cheese and cheese. There's the macaroni and cheese with the ham hocks and the jalapenos. And we're gonna keep working on those artichoke pies. How are those potatoes coming, Carl? Potatoes are ready. Okay, awesome. All right. Okay. I have a hungry husband. I'm sure many of you wives understand. He's sitting over there, Uncle Brian's sitting at the table waiting to be fed. But thank God Uncle Carlos brought his oxtails already done because like he said, it is getting late and we're getting hungry. So I don't I'm going to Brian. I was like, well, Brian's going to be hungry and he's not going to want to wait nope. on so, his oxtails. He might not let me come back. So I know. He'll hungry. always let, him, let you come back. I'm going to go ahead and put a plate together for him. So you can see what we've got so far. He's not going to eat artichoke pie anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and put together a plate for our pie. Get some of these gorgeous potatoes that you've made, we've made. Mm -hmm. You know, dip it with this macaroni and cheese. And I'm just going to use that spoon for that. Beautifulness. That cream and all of that stuff's incorporated. Just beautiful. And we'll use this. Well, I, I think I need to have one without the slot. Uh, yeah, without the slot. I want to have all the goodness in there. So let me get this. All right. So we got 
the carrots that you guys are watching us make now. Here are some of the carrots. And this meat's just falling off the bone. It's just absolutely falling completely off the bone. Look at that. Just beautiful. So pretty. You know what else would be really nice here? A dollop of sour cream and a few little chops of chives just yep. for presentation or a sprinkle of parsley. I'll probably do that when we actually plate, make the plate that we do the photo for. But this is what, uh, what we're working on. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Like I said, if you are, please do me a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring that bell because we're trying to get this channel monetized ASAP. So I'll be right back. I gotta go feed my husband. So the artichoke pies are ready. Thank goodness. So here we go with that. So Carlos is getting that for us to see. And remember, I upped the notch on this. They're really pretty though, aren't they? They're so, so beautiful. What I'd probably do here is I would add, you know, you could do a couple of things. We talked about that when we were making them, but you could, if you were doing these for a party, you could take some pimento um, and slice them up a little bit and then add a little bit of parsley on there. And I think I'll actually do one for a plate for you guys to see that. But that's just a nice little way of really dressing that up for presentation, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. You could even also take a little bit of a Parmesan crisp. They have those so easy now. We can make them obviously in the oven, but you can buy them in like bags. You could take a couple of Parmesan stick crisp and stick them in there too because this cheese is still soft and pliable. Um, before it gets set up. So before it cools down, you could do that. Stick something in there if you wanted to do something extra special. Make them a little bit more fancy schmancy. They definitely smell good. They sure do. So I think the second batch is getting ready to be ready to go into the, the oven. Yeah. It so is. what do we need to do now? All we're going to do, uh, if you want, I can hold it, hold the pot pan, and you'll label it in. Okay, I can do that. All right. So we'll, uh, I got it. Uh, so what I've got in here, of course, I said I got the vegetables, which were the carrots and the celery. We kind of uh, fried them in the oil. Then we added the uh, wine, the red wine, chicken stock, and some water. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course I, I seasoned them up a little bit, salt and pepper. Um, they've been reducing, so they're good. They're going to reduce even more in the oven. So what we'll do. Here's the label. I'm going to label this bowl in here. I know you guys can't see that, but I'm just going to take this and put this on top. All this gorgeous celery and tomato. No, yeah, well, it's the tomato base on there. Mm -hmm. The celery and the carrots. The good thing about having so much juice there, um, like I said, it's going to reduce. Well, it looks like a lot now, but that water's going to boil off of there. It's going to thicken up. How's it tasting, guys? Good. <laughs> Need a little more enthusiasm. They're so busy over there filling their faces full of this goodness, they're not even paying any attention to this show. <laughs> <laughs> what you thinking? I'm thinking what you see in there, um, you, you can keep leave there? that there, okay. and then after it reduces down, you can add Use that. that to put back on. You want some tinfoil? Yeah. Or right. aluminium, as we say, because I've been watching all these wonderful shows on Netflix because we've been stuck at home, mm -hmm. and I've got several particular words that my British friends are using yeah, aluminium. and aluminium has been one of the ones that I've had stuck in my head so now when I think about using aluminum foil I think aluminum doesn't sound good aluminium sounds so much sexier doesn't it so much more sophisticated yes yeah. higher thinking all right I'll be right back with so yeah aluminum. we're going to cover this um we're going to add it now like I said 350 is good we have it at 450 right now if you anything like this especially with the meat if you up that temperature that 450 is going to drastically reduce your cooking time we'll leave it at that for the sake of time and uh just check it just watch it good thing is it's in a glass pot if it's not in a glass pot like if you had it in a, one of the little cast iron dutch ovens mm -hmm. or something then just pull it out take the top off and check it out exactly um, also you can add bay leaves to it 
Some some people do. I sure. have. It's fine. And there's a lot of interesting properties to, to bay leaves. But yeah, you said 350, typically hold it in the oven for two to three hours. Mm -hmm. So around about an hour and a half at 450, I'd check it. And you're probably going to need to add some more fluid to it, and it'll be close to done. I think we should add some more wine. What do y'all think? <laughs> All right, I'm going to do what I said earlier. I'm going to take some of that pretty parsley that we pulled, and I'm going to slice up a little bit of a bell pepper and decorate one of these guys so that you can see what they look like. And then I think we'll be ready to uh, start plating. So I just made a couple of little slithers. Let me find a pretty one. This one's nice and plump. And you could do something like that. Really just be creative. It doesn't have to be anything specific. You can just, you know, stick a few things in there and then take a couple of these things of parsley and lay it on top like that. Look at how pretty that looks. It's still warm, but look how pretty that looks. Isn't that cute? If an artichoke pie could be cute, called cute, that's cute. Right. That's really cute. So, listen, Carlos and I just want you to know that if, if you've had any fun, right, like yep. we have, we're having a lot of fun, found any value in any of these gorgeous recipes from the garden to the table to the oxtails and the wonderful wine and the elevated artichoke pie, do us both a favor and like and share. And don't forget to ring the bell so that you're notified each week when we drop a new episode. And our show, Two Chefs in the Sweet Life Kitchen, is every single Thursday. So we'll see you soon. Take care. Take care.